Okay, so here we have a totally different positioning of the skeleton um, diving into the pool and we're going to see how the directional lines will help us um, to show this position. Right, so again, I'm going to start with the rib cage and I'm still going to think of it as a kind of an egg-like shape. And I'm going to locate the breastbone. So the tape is helping me to see that the breastbone is a sort of a curve like this. Not a straight line, but a curve. So that shows us a lot about which direction is the ribcage moving. And I'm going to throw the imaginary ellipse around, kind of right here. So that helps to give direction or thrust to the rib cage. Yeah. Now I'm going to look at the skull. So once again, I'm going to think of the skull as a kind of a sphere or a ball with a cylinder on the front. The cylinder is an oval attached to another oval and the sides. And I'm going to once again look at the direction of the nose. And I'm going to imagine uh, an ellipse going around the skull right through the eyebrows. Right. This is very helpful to get the direction or thrust of the skull. I'm going to look at the spine, which is going in a different direction here and here. And now let's look at the pelvis. There's one wing of the pelvis here. And the other one over here. And let's look at the legs. So this is the blue tape that I put on the knee of this leg. Right here is where the end of the femur appears to be. And then the rest of the femur is coming back at an angle like this. The lower leg, because it's bent, is going in a very different direction, more like this. To help clarify that this is in front, I'm going to use my eraser, taking out some of the marks here. We'll make this look more solid and it'll make it look a bit more like it's in front. The other leg is going in a very different direction. We have something going this way. And the end of the femur right here. So let's look at the blue tape, which is going this way. Very helpful for us to um, see the direction of this part of the leg. The lower leg going off like this. So there's the tibia, the knee, and the femur. Now I'm going to come back down here and we're going to look at the arms this time. So we put some visual aids on the arms to help us see their direction. This arm is going this way. 
this arm is going in a slightly different direction. And I also put some tapes down here on the hands to help us see where the hands are. So again, these tapes are going in slightly different directions, as are the hands. So they really help us to see the direction and thrust. In fact, I think these directional lines or lines of thrust are much more important than the lines that we might make to depict the individual bones of the skeleton. It doesn't matter if I draw a pinky bone, for example, or a thumb, or the, what the wrist bones look like. But if I get these directional lines into my drawing, it captures very well what the skeleton is doing, which direction the parts of the skeleton are aiming. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to darken a few of the marks here. Just give a little bit more shape to some parts of the skeleton and make it clear what's in front, what's behind. Mm 